welcome to Feelers on Four Wheels tips and advice for traveling South America and in this episode specifically Brazil. As we are driving towards Belém, we thought we would start with driving traffic and navigation tips. So honey, what's your tips? Well, coming from Argentina, I found uh, that the traffic was a bit more, or the driving was a bit more aggressive, so uh, people are not as nice and don't really give you a chance if you want to open bank. Um, the, it's still, they're still the same probably if you drive um, uh, on the national roads and it's hilly, the, the trucks will accelerate downhill um, and um, then they actually go slower uphill so it's quite difficult to overtake them if you are driving an older car um, also they tend to pass you from behind so if let's say there's three cars behind the truck um, they, they will just pass you even though your indicator is on so you must be really aware of your, the traffic in front of you and behind you when you indicate that you're going to overtake do it because otherwise they get impatient um, in the cities uh, in cities like Salvador I found it quite hectic we didn't know the city and you have to change names the whole time so there but don't give you a chance we just opened the window and um, like in the show waved at them showed them, them that you're gonna overtake or go to the left lane and that actually quite helped a bit a uh, few things around navigation um, at traffic circles sometimes there is stop signs for the lane merging into the traffic circle and sometimes there is a stop sign for the lane in the circle so be aware of that that's for us very un uh, uh, unusual for us and a lot of times people just ignore stop signs yeah. stop signs are not seen really as stop signs also um, speeding so the, except for a few instances on the national roads, it looks like the limit is actually 80 kilometers an hour. Um, nobody really, oh gosh, what am I going to do here? Uh, um, we have it's a tricky an, road today. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a pothole pot party. So, we have lots of trucks and holes and cars overtaking challenges for us today. Keep us awake and alert. Um, oh, the speed limit. So, speed limit looks like it's most of the time it's 80. Nobody really abides to it, except if there's a traffic camera, uh, which is normally in the beginning at the end of a town where they reduce the speed limit to either 50 or 60 or 40 or 30. Um, and everybody breaks at the camera. Um, and very much, if it's 60, they bring like 59 they will go down to 30 so I don't know why but yeah that's the only space where they actually respect the speed limit otherwise it's, you can drive as fast as you want to Okay, yeah, yeah, and then a few things regarding uh, fuel is one of your biggest expenses if you are driving through Brazil. Um, the prices actually vary greatly from state to state from what we can see. Some places in the big cities it's cheaper, sometimes on the main roads it's cheaper. Uh, most places they advertise the, the price per liter, but yeah, if you have a bigger tank or if you can plan a little bit, um, you can save quite a bit. There's up to a real difference between um, one petrol station and maybe a petrol station 500 kilometers more. So if you see where it's cheaper, then you can maybe fill up more, if you, especially if you have a bigger tank. Uh, we don't have that luxury, so we just fill up where we can, but we do keep an eye on the price. Uh, I presume it's taxes from different state to different state. And then the commune and additive. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Then another thing, you'll get two types of normal fuel, not diesel. You get two types of gasolina, a commune and a dativa. Um, it's all 95. Um, the mechanics that we've spoken to said to use, uh, use commune. The additiva is some sort of additive that each company puts in and nobody really knows what it is. You can add your own additive if you want to, but the mechanics recommendation with, with a petrol engine use, 
uh, gasolina commune. Don't use additiva. Okay, I think that's it for the driving. We'll continue our tips and tricks with yes. more um, advice later on. Next part of our video, we will cover a little bit about financing. Drawing cash at an ATM can be quite challenging in Brazil as only certain ATMs will accept certain types of cards. We found that if you use the 24 Horas ATM that is not linked to a specific bank, your chances are the best of getting cash. It's not the cheapest, you get charged 24 reals per withdrawal and maximum of a thousand reals can be drawn at a time. One tip we can give you is when the ATM asks you to accept the conversion rate, it is best to click decline on the ATM as they then you do get a better exchange rate. We also got the cheapest withdrawals at the Tau Bank, ITAU Bank, but it very seldom accepted our cards and we were using a variety of Visa and MasterCards. We were also using an American debit card compared to a South African credit card. So be patient, try a few banks, try your different cards and check your rates and check your fees. But on average we were charged 24 reals per withdrawal. So we hope to save you a little bit of money and makes your travel easier. So on to the next part of our tips and tricks for traveling South America and Brazil in particular. Okay, so the first thing is Brazil is huge. Um, initially we thought that we can do it in three months, but if, yeah, if you wanna see half of what's there, six months is the minimum. We drove, just to give you an idea, we, we entered at the south at Fort de Iguazu, went to the Pantanal, then to the coast, um, and then slowly went north. Um, first of all, or secondly, um, make sure that the places you want to visit, you can actually reach in the given time that you are there. Um, that means that you must look at the seasons, especially the rainy seasons. Are the roads accessible? Um, that the the that, more that, that rain that and less rainy seasons. It rains in some yeah. places all year round. Yeah, so, so uh, and a lot of roads are gravel roads, so just make sure, for instance, the Pantanal, we had to basically go for because we knew the rainy season would start and you wouldn't get to the destination if it rained a lot. I'll link that video here. Yeah, so you um, can especially have a look. with a 2x4 two by two by car. If it's a 4x4, four four, maybe you can do it, but it's still a bit, you know serious stuff. And some places are more enjoyable certain times of year. Yeah. So just to give you an idea of the 17,000 kilometers we've done in our whole trip, 10,000 have been just in Brazil. In um, five months. In five months. So yeah, then other things that will make your um, trip more enjoyable. Mm. If you're going to be here for a while, apply for a tax number. It's called a CPF number. You are asked for it a lot and mm. some things will just be easier to do um, if you have that number. What? For example, to get a SIM card will be easier if you have a CPF number. So mm -hmm. if you have the time, uh, apply for it online, you get it at the postal services, Correos, um, and the foreigner can get it. it it's not an issue to get it. Um, we took a full day of walking around Sao Paulo to get a SIM card. If we had a CPF, CPF number, we could have gotten it from the first place we yeah. got into. Also for we for online shopping, um, at supermarkets, mm -hmm. uh, multiple places, you will get asked for it. Another yeah. thing that I want to mention is Portuguese. Um, it's not Spanish. Um, and nobody really speaks English. So um, do yourself a favor if you have the time learn a few Portuguese phrases. Um, we kind of like, could get along with our broken Spanish. We could ask questions and, and but but yeah it's still to, to get to lo to get to know the locals and um, just find out where places are. Um, yeah a bit of Portuguese would have helped us a lot. We used Google Translate um, and that was sufficient but yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not the same. Okay. Yeah, then um, campsites, um, for us coming to from South Africa where we are used to quite a well organized and nice campsites, mm. it was very different in um, Brazil. 
a lot of places is um, day visit camping where yes you can you if you also you can camp but it's not made for campsites um, like the place we're staying at now this uh, um, it's it will, will used to be a place where you could come and swim and drink and party in the day but it's not really a campsite um, it's sort of closed down uh, a lot of places are quite dilapidated along the coast we had better campsites but yeah it's very different from the campsites we are used to um, a lot of places you will only have cold showers sometimes you have suicide showers amenities is quite basic don't expect too much if you expect too much you're going to be permanently disappointed rather expect uh, less and and be surprised yeah and another thing um, and that links into traveling a lot um, is when you decide to go to a spot and it's maybe 2,000 kilometers from your current like, spot um, staying at petrol stations is actually it, it it's yeah people just do it here um, it's not like it's generally Africa, accepted yeah, yeah. yeah it's not like in south africa where peop it's frowned upon or you would be a bit scared i think it links to um truck drivers there's a lot of trucks who actually stay overnight because of the long distances and there's not really a lot of campsites in, the, in certain areas so um, if you look on eye overlander um, it's really safe to yeah. stay at uh, um, at any station a petrol station and um, there's normally there's toilets obviously but then there's also a restaurant there's there, there might be a free shower or you pay a little bit to shower so yeah the, I, I i actually like it at the moment so if we decide to have to yes. and travel i wouldn't wild camp i would rather stay at the petrol station i think in, it's safe yeah. yeah yeah it's very different from what, what we are used to yeah um, but very accepted here it's not frowned upon and um, um if you because it's so humid you want to shower more than you would in other um, <coughs> uh, weather conditions and here and, and there's always or most of the time there is some sort of shower um, it's linked as well to long distances we on average would cover 50 kilometers in an hour driving we would drive faster than that but that's the actual 50 50 yeah uh, that's mm -hmm. the actual you know distance we would cover because of um, traffic commerce you know um, um, rumble strips and uh, lots of tra traffic although we drive at 80 kilometers an hour we yeah only cover that's my foster. max so we don't really see yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I get overtaken a lot yes yes um, so that's another reason why um, the petrol stations is, co is, is quite popular um, we found that in Brazil Argentina and in Chile okay mm. so yes if you guys have any other tips please leave it in comments below um, if you'd like to see more of our videos smash that a thumbs up or hit the bell icon so you'll get notified of all our future adventures have a great trip cheers